This is your 28storms.com cyclone update for this Wednesday, the 8th of November. For the past several days, we have been discussing a tropical disturbance located in the Arabian Sea, and it has now officially been upgraded to Tropical Cyclone 4A. It is currently packing maximum sustained winds of 35 knots with gusts exceeding 45 knots, and it is forecast to gradually strengthen with a peak intensity of 45 knots within the next 48 hours. And as you can see, the latest U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecast simply has the storm meandering just off the coastline and then beginning to drift more toward the west-southwest as it starts to dissipate. I do agree with their intensity forecast, however, I do have some slight disagreement with regard to this west-southwest drift. I think it is a little bit more likely that the low will remain nearly stationary and then just dissipate altogether just off the coast of Oman. This was the most recent microwave satellite pass taken of the tropical cyclone a few hours ago. And as to be expected for a minimal tropical system, the convection is somewhat disorganized and located a little bit away from the center. The surface circulation appears to be in this general vicinity, and overall the convection is displaced to the northwest. Given the current satellite presentation, it is no surprise that the tropical cyclone is along the western edge of the favorable axis of upper-level ridging over much of the central Arabian Sea. And as you can see, just off toward the northwest, over the Arabian Peninsula, the vertical wind shear increases rather dramatically in excess of 30 to 50 knots. And the wind shear is associated with this mid to upper level trough as depicted in the ECMWF model. And fortunately, this trough is forecast to continue digging a little bit more toward the southeast over the next 48 to 72 hours. Looking at the ECMWF forecast at the surface, here is that 1,005 millibar cyclone over the Arabian Sea. This is the coast of Oman. Yemen's a little bit more toward the west. And as we go into 24, 48, and 72 hours, the storm is closely approaching the coast of Oman. But the good news is that it looks like by 96 hours, that trough is playing a major role in significantly weakening the system due to dry air and wind shear. The European is also in close agreement with the latest GFS model forecast. As we can see, the tropical cyclone is expected to hold together fairly well over the first 42 hours of the forecast period. But as we move into day three, and as the system gets closer to the coastline, it really looks like the southwest wind shear is really going to begin significantly weakening the system. But even if the storm is downgraded shortly before landfall, the threat of heavy rainfall and some isolated flooding could still be a legitimate concern, especially right near the coast. And again, this is a bit more of a factor considering that this area was recently flooded by Tropical Cyclone 3A. And finally, this is just a quick look at the cyclone in its current state. The convection is flaring fairly well. It's just ever so slightly detached from that surface circulation, with much of it being just to the northwest. And if we turn on the latest water vapor, we see that the shear and the dry air is lurking just off to the west and northwest of the tropical cyclone. But at the same time, we do see that little pocket of moisture beginning to funnel its way closer to Oman. And that is going to be the main concern with this system. And really quickly, there are just no signs of anything lurking around the Australian continent. And despite having much more convection over portions of the Coral Sea and into the South Pacific, it looks as though the current upper-level winds are just too hostile for any tropical development. The last thing we will look at are some of the model forecasts for the Southern Pacific. And if you recall in yesterday's video, some of the models were developing a broad trough of low pressure closer to New Caledonia and Fiji. The good news is that if anything, that feature has dissipated or relaxed a little bit in the model, so we're not really overly concerned about tropical development anywhere in the southern hemisphere over the next seven to ten days. So as to be expected for the month of November, the tropics in the southern hemisphere are fairly quiet, but what is somewhat unexpected are the multiple threats that have been posed toward Yemen and Oman. Of course, this is the second tropical cyclone to threaten that area within just the past week. But as always, we will continue to monitor things both in the Indian Ocean and into the South Pacific. So stay tuned to 28storms.com slash cyclone for more video updates.